Yeah, I'll do that to all my viewers. In this video, I'm going to present you some others lightning question that will come out in Y2023 mathematics paper. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel. I'm begging you, subscribe to this channel. Also hit the notification bell so that whenever any new video is uploaded on this channel, you will be among the first people to have it. Thank you so much. I'm also kindly share this video to all students that you know they are preparing for their yeah, uh, exam come 2023. Please, kindly share to all of them. Share to your children, share to your neighbors, children, share to everyone that you know that this video will be a bit of help to. Please, kindly do that. Thank you so much. Now, let's have the first question. Now, looking at the first question, we are asked to solve an inequality. We are asked to solve for 1 all over x, I mean, sorry, 1 all over 3, in the brackets. Open bracket, 5 minus 3x, close bracket. Less than 2 all over 5, open bracket, 3 minus x, close bracket. Okay? Let's take the solution now. Let's have the solution down. Okay? So we have 1 all over 3, open bracket, 5 minus 3x, close bracket, less than 2 all over 5. 2 over 5, open bracket, 3 minus x, close bracket. Now, this inequality now, if you multiply it by 15, the whole thing multiply by 15. So that, I want to remove the fraction, so that it will be easier to solve, okay? 15 multiply by 3. Why do I choose 15? I choose 15 because it will, it will work for both this part and this part. It will remove the fraction at this part and the fraction at this part also, okay? 15 multiplied by 1 over 3, that will give us what? That will give us 5, okay? So we have 5 into brackets, 5 open bracket, 5 minus 3x, less than 5, I mean, one of, I mean 2 over 5 multiplied by 15. You know, 5 becomes, 5 is going 15, 3 times, and 3 times 2, that will give us 6, we have 3 open bracket, sorry, 6 open bracket, 3 minus x. So you can see that we have a little bit simplified. Now, going for that, we open the bracket, we clear up the bracket, we have... 5 times 5 to be 25. Okay, 5 times minus I mean, negative 3x, that will give us negative 15x. Okay, the inequality sign. So we have 6 times 3, that will give us what? 18. And 6 times negative x, that will give us negative 6x. Okay, so that the next thing to do is to take the right hand. We bring them to x to this side and we take to that x to the other side. Or if we do otherwise, we still get the answer. Let's do the, let, let, let do the other way around. Okay, let's bring all the density of x to the other side so that we have 25 and 8 taken from this side to this side will be, sorry, 18 taken from this side to this side will be minus 18 and we have 25 minus 18 less than so, minus 6x okay, taking negative 15x from this side to this side will become positive 15x okay so that 25 minus 18 will be what? Will be 7 less than negative negative 6x plus 15x that will give us what that will give us seven sorry that will give us nine x that will give us nine x okay and if you divide both sides by nine so that we make x the solid formula we have everything is like nine so that we have uh seven all over nine less than x okay seven all over nine less than x this statement is the same thing as x greater than Seven all over nine. So that is the answer. Now let's take a look at question number two. He has to make m the subject of the relation k equal to square root of m minus y plus m minus, I mean all over m plus one. Okay. Now we want to make m the subject of formula in this relation. We are rewriting the relation as k equals to m. Square root of m m plus y all over m all m, m, m plus one all together square root. Okay. This at this level we can take the square of both sides. Take the square of both sides so that square we cancel square root and we are left with k square equal to m plus y all over m plus one. Sorry m minus y okay as it is in the question okay now from here we do cross multiplication so that uh, we have k square 
into bracket m plus one equal to m minus y. And since we are uh, going to make m the sort of solution of formula, clear off this bracket and bring the things into m together so that we have k square m plus k square equal to m minus y, which we in turn implies that k m, I mean k square m, uh, bringing m to this side will be minus m equals to minus k square minus y. Okay? Now, from here, now we can factor out the m so that we have m into bracket k square minus 1 equal to, of course, we can factor minus sign, negative sign here so that we have negative sign outside the bracket k plus y. Okay? So that you make m, you, you divide both sides by k, k square minus 1 and you have m to be equal to negative into brackets, I mean, sorry, or uh, minus open brackets, k plus y, everything divided by k squared minus 1. Okay? Now, from this uh, step, now, from this step, what do we do? We can as well factor out negative sign here by rewriting this to be, we write it to be m equals to m equals to minus k plus y so it's k squared k squared as it is from here k squared it's a mistake k squared okay m equals to k squared plus y minus k squared plus y all over this can be minus one plus k squared i've not changed anything okay minus one plus k squared just we have minus one plus k squared here. Okay, now we can factor out the minus negative sign to the denominator now so that we have this to be m equals to this to be m equals to or minus k squared plus y as it is all over negative sign outside the bracket. Then we have one minus k squared. Okay, and negative sign we can so don't forget this is the same thing as this. If you Open up this bracket, clear up this bracket, you get this expression. This is the nomination part. You say minus times one, that will give you minus one. Minus times minus k squared, that will give you plus k squared. So that's what we have just done. So that negative sign becomes negative sign. And we are left with m to be equals to uh, m to be equals to k squared plus y or better still y plus k squared all over 1 minus k squared final answer okay now let's take a brief look at question number three okay just we as we have it on the board we are asked to find the quadratic equation whose roots are 1 over 2 and negative 1 over 3 okay now let's have the solution now if the quadratic if the root of the quadratic equations are 1 all over 2 and negative 1 all over 3, it means that if the quadratic equation is written in the variable x, the variable x will be equal to 1 all over 2 or 1 all over I mean negative 1 all over 3. And with that, we can bring 1 all over 2 to this side and equate it to 0 so that we have x minus half equals to it implies that x minus half equals to zero or x plus one all over three equal to zero now to simplify the whole thing we multiply this by half okay, by two multiply this equation by three just to remove the fraction so that if you multiply this by two you have two x minus one equal to zero or 3x plus 1 equal to 0. It is quite right that if any of this is equal to 0, then their product is equal to 0. Okay? So from here, we can distribute this over this so that we have 2x distributed over 3x plus 1. Then negative 1 distributed over 3x, 3x plus 1 
everything equal to zero so that you have three two s times three s here will be six x squared then two s times one that would be two x minus x minus one times three x that would be minus three x minus one times minus times one that would be minus one equal to zero so six x six x squared plus 2x minus 3x, that will give us minus x minus 1 equal to 0. This is the quadratic equation that we are looking for. So, now let's take a look at this beautiful question. Given that this is directly proportional to y and inversely proportional to z, s is equal to 15 when y equal to 10 and z equal to 4. We are asked to find the equation connecting s, y, and z. Okay? This is a uh, Question under proportion, under proportion, okay. Direct, direct proportion, inverse proportion, uh, combine both direct and in, inverse, okay. And if you uh, if you want me to do video on proportion as a topic under mathematics, kindly let me know in the comment section. Now, let's go to the solution of this now. Uh, by interpretation, if x is directly proportional to y, it means x. Is directly proportional as we have direct direct proportional sign a proportional sign to y okay and inversely proportional to z it means x is at the same time x is proportion directly proportional to y and is inversely proportional to z bringing this together make it x directly proportional to y inversely proportional to z so by interpretation to remove the proportional sign, you introduce proportional constant, which is k. And if you introduce it, this proportional sign will change from proportional sign like this to equal to sign. Then k, y all over z. Or z. Sorry, z. Okay? So let's input or insert the value given to each variable. We have x to be equal to 15. And when s is equal to 15, so y is equal to what? 10. So we have k times 10. Okay? And z is equal to what? 4. So that if you do cross multiplication, you have 15 times 4. That will give you 60 all over 10k. <laughs> it's not it's not as in 10k in Nigeria module. It's not it's not it's not like 10,000 naira. <laughs> so 10k, okay? So that making k the subject of formula, you have k to be equal to 60 all over 10. In other words, we have divided both sides by 10. So that 10 becomes 10. We are left with k here. So then 60 divided by 10. So, so that k will be equal to 6. Okay? This is not the final destination. We still have to find the equation that connects x, y, and z. Therefore, the equation that connects x, y, and z, since we have realized the value of k now, will be 6, will be equal to 6. Let's go straight and put the value of k into this equation. And we have e to be x. We have this equation to be x to be equal to 10. Plus, that will be 10 over 10. All over 10. Okay? This is the final. Now, question number five is another beautiful question that we want to take a look at. Two buses start from the same station at 9 a.m. And, uh, and travel in an opposite direction along the same straight line road. The first bus travels at a speed of 72 km per hour. If I should demonstrate this, I should demonstrate this. And I would like to. The first bus, let's say the first bus travels in this direction. And is traveling at speed 72 kilometer per hour. Okay? This is the first bus traveling in this direction. And the second bus is also traveling in this direction. And is traveling with speed 48, 48 kilometer per hour. Per hour. Now, the question is that at what time? They all start at, let's say, time. 
T equals to 9 m Okay? Now, at what time will they have traveled 240 kilometers apart? Don't forget that speech, speech, which I want to denote as S, is defined as distance travel. Distance travel. Which I want to denote as D. In this video, I denote it as D all over time taken. Okay? All over time taken, which is denoted as T. So that we are given the, 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 the first, uh, okay, with the, din, with the notation of, let me point out the formula so that we have x which is this which is speed equal to d all over t which is distance travel over time and you know from this if you want to know distance we, we do from if you do cross multiplication distance is equal to st okay distance is equal to the product of speed of an object or of a vehicle and the time taking okay so that the distance that the first vehicle has traveled will be taking us. You know, the first vehicle is moving with a speed of 72 km per hour, so that we have the distance of the first vehicle, so call it distance 1, equals to uh, the speed, which is 72 km per hour. Let's, let's, uh, let's not worry about the, the, the unit now. Let's leave the unit first. Then the time, if it's T, we are yet to know the time, okay? And the distance traveled by the second vehicle, which is D2, is equal to D2 is equal to uh, 72 km per hour. 72 km per hour for uh, first vehicle. Second vehicle, 40, 48 km per hour. So that we have 48 times T. Okay? So, we want to... Now, we are given that... We, we, we are given that both of them have traveled... 240 kilometer apart. In other words, the total distance both of them have traveled apart is 240. In other words, if we add distance 1, that is D1, which is 72 times T, plus D2, which is 48 times T. Okay? If we add it together, we will have the distance of, I mean, the distance between both vehicles, which is 240 as it is given in the equation, in the question rather. So from here now, we can go ahead and do what? And factor out T. So that we have T into T open bracket 72 plus 48. Everything equals to 240. Okay? And having done that, 72 plus 48. Okay? 2 plus 8, that's 10. We write 0. And 4 plus 7, that is 11. 11 plus so one that is 12 that is 120 so we have 120 t equal to 240 okay don't forget we are looking for the time uh, we are looking for the time at which both of them will have traveled 240 kilometer apart so the time will be t equal to if you make this so subject so formula by dividing both sides by 120 you have t to be equal to 240 divided by 120 and of course so you have t to be equal to 2 hours. Don't forget, it's in hours. Because we are, we, we are given the speed in kilometer per hours, the speed of the both vehicle in kilometer per hours. Only both of them started the journey from the same station at 9 a.m. So the time it has taken them to travel 240 kilometer apart will be 9 a.m. will be equal to 9 a.m. plus two hours and that will give you 11 a.m. So that is that.